is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. Read. For it is evidence. So it's saying there's evidence, it's proof. Read. That our Lord. That, that who? Our Lord. That our Lord. Who is our Lord, brother? Who is our Lord? The most up. Most up. Jesus Christ, right? Read. Spring out of Judah. Read. Of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. So if Christ was here today, he would be, and they would call him what they call us, a so-called African-American. So Christ, the greatest man that ever walked this planet, came from the tribe of Judah, just like you. That's a powerful saying. Because we've been taught that Christ is what? A white man, right? And I'm saying Christ looks like you and me. So, in the Bible, it tells us that, uh, move on, that's uh, that's that's it. That's it. That's it. First, that's long time. Because what we're going to do in the scriptures, how y'all doing, brother? Y'all got time to listen to the word? I mean, bad, Whoa, we bro, it's your nationality. It's more important than what you're doing right now, believe me. All right, get that right there. Because the Bible told us to do one thing. The Bible said to, uh, I can't just say what I believe. I have to be able to go in the scriptures and prove it. Read that. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5, and verse 21. Uh -huh. Prove all things. So the Bible tells us to prove all things. Because we've been in church a long time. Nobody has proven anything. They tell us we're African Americans. God loves everybody. Read that again. All things. So we can go in the Bible and prove all things that God don't love everybody. Contrary to popular belief, God does not love everybody. God only and Christ came for the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel, and we can prove it. We can prove that Christ is a black man in the scriptures. You said you knew Christ was a black man. So if I told you told me Christ is a black man, read that verse again. Prove all things. So how can you prove? Come on up, speak to me. What? Alright, so let's get it for you. We're gonna get it for you. So so in case somebody else asks you, because they'll say, uh-uh. Uh it don't matter what color Christ look like, or 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 they'll say, uh, you you don't know if he's black. Nobody's seen him. That's I heard that before. We're gonna show you the revelation of Jesus Christ. We're gonna show it to you in the scripture. Read that. Bring it out. Start at one and one. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. So if anybody asks you, you can go to the book of Revelation and be able to prove what the color of Christ is. Give me that. Uh -huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. which God gave unto him to shoot unto his servants, things which may shortly come to pass. So do you know what revelation means? What's the root word of it? <clears throat> to reveal. All praise. Good answer. So we're going to reveal what Jesus Christ looks like. Give me verse 14. Verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hair. So he said he looked at Christ's head and his hairs. He looked at his head, looked at the hairs on his face because Christ was an Israelite man. He had to have a beard on his face. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So who has woolly? So wool is wool a color or a texture? Wool, wool is a texture. Who has woolly hair on the planet? So, does this man here have a woolly hair? So, that would be Jesus. That's strike one against him. Keep reading. His head and his hair were white like wool. So, they were white and wool. Read. As white as snow. Uh-huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So, his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why do you think his eyes were as a flame of fire? Passion. Say that again? Passion. Passion. That's a good answer. But uh, let's, we're going to give you the biblical answer of why his eyes were red. Give me that. Genesis 49. So we're going to, like we said, we're going to prove all things. So we're going to show you why Christ's eyes was red. Because the Bible defines itself. You don't need another book to define the Bible. It'll define itself. Read that. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. Uh -huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. So his eyes, that, that's a prophecy about Christ. His eyes shall be red with wine. So Christ's first miracle was what? Turning water into wine. He drank some. You know, he wasn't a drunk, but he drank wine. So his eyes were red. Let's go back to that prophecy again in Revelation. So now we know he has woolly hair on his head and his beard, and his eyes was a flame of fire because he drank wine. Let's, keep, let's read it. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine bread. So John the Revelator looked down at Christ's feet. You got me, you with me, brother? All right. 
So he looked down at Christ's feet. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So his feet were like fine brass. What color is brass? Copper color. Yeah, like a copper or a brown, like the color of a penny, right? Keep reading. And his voice as a... As if they burned in a furnace. So if I take that brown uh, brass or copper look and burn it, what color is it? Dark. Turns darker, right? So it turns black. So Christ was a black man with white woolly hair on his head, right? So does that make sense to you? So now, when we, when somebody say you, you should be able to prove that Christ was a black man, you can come to the scripture. Now, do you know that uh, we read in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 that Solomon uh, was the wisest man, and we gave you his. Uh, he gave you what he said that you had to do to get into the kingdom, right? The whole duty of man. Hey, bro, how y'all doing? Y'all want to come on this word? Come on up. Yeah, we in a hurt rush right hey, now. Hey, come on back. Come on back and learn, learn this word. All right. So now, so we're gonna prove that Christ's uh, forefather was Solomon. We're gonna show you what color Solomon was in the scriptures. Because if if Christ is a black man, his forefather should be black, right? So we're going to read that in the Bible. This stuff is in the Bible that we never knew was in there. You get what I'm saying? Give it that. The book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh-huh. The Song of Solomon, which is Solomon. So the Song of Song, which is Solomon. So Solomon wrote this song, jump to verse 5. I am black. I am what? I am black. I am what? I am black. Read. The comely. So Solomon saying, I'm black and comely, which means I'm black and I'm a handsome man. You know our brother, we always say that, hey, I'm black and beautiful. That's what Solomon was saying even in the spirit back then. So we know that Solomon, being Christ's forefather, uh, he was a black man as well. So now we read in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 that the whole duty of man was to do what? Do you remember? Uh, uh, the conclusion. The conclusion of the whole matter was. So we're going to get it for you one more time. So because what we want you to do is be able to take what you're learning and take it home, expand on your learning, go a little bit further, go deeper, learn these scriptures, like, you know, just study, learn. Give me that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter, two, chapter 12, verse 13. Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So Solomon is telling us the conclusion. Who's a black man is going to tell us the conclusion of the whole matter. Read. Fear God. So we have to fear God. And keep his commandments. Uh -huh. For this is the whole duty of man. This is what our job is. to fear. We were put on this planet to fear God and keep his commandments. We were not fear, We were not put on this planet to be in captivity, serving, working these many of jobs at Burger King, being at the bottom, getting shot down the street, being mistreated. That's not our duty. We just read our duty was to keep God's commandments. That's our whole duty. Now, we are in a bad position. Wouldn't you agree? As a black man. Hey, bro, would you agree with that? Black man is in a bad position. So, with the black man being in a bad position, how did we end up here? What did we do? That, because if God, if the whole duty of God is to keep his commandments, obviously something happened and we must not have kept it. You agree? So we're going to go get a book of Deuteronomy 28 to show you what happened to the blacks the Hispanics and Native Americans, because this is a prophecy, prophecy that's going to prove why they're in the condition they're in. Give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Give me, give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. So we'll get the context, brother. We'll get the context of what he's talking to. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, uh -huh. chapter 1 and verse this 1. Is, brother. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Hey, brother, come here for a second. I just oh. asked him what the whole duty of man was. Alright, These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. He spake to who? All Israel. So who was he speaking to? Israel. So he was speaking to Israel. That give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Hey, bro, come on up. We, we over here going through a stuff. What's your name? What's your name? Sure. Ray. Come Ray Ray. Ray Ray. Okay. What we over here, we just read that the whole duty of man was to fear God <laughs> and keep his commandments. So, since we didn't keep the commandments, we are over here in this condition. And we're going to go through why we're in the conditions. All right? You with me? All right? We're going we're gonna to tell you why. Because most of us don't have a clue why we're in the condition that we're in. We just know we came over here and now we're at the bottom. 
So we're going to find out. Give it to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. So we're going to first find out who Moses was speaking to. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. These are the words in the Bible. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So Moses was speaking to who? He was speaking to Israel. Because the white man that's in Israel now, he can say, hey, he was speaking to me, right? He, was, he said he Israel. So we're going to be able to, we're going to go in the Bible, and just like we told the brother here, we've got to prove all things. So now we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, and we're going to show you God had a contract with us. We made a contract with God. We said it was a, it was a, uh, if you do this, you get this. If you don't, then this is what's going to happen. So we're going to give you the flip side of that contract. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 1 first. So we're going to show you what would have happened if we kept God's commandments. Because that's key. Because guess what? How are we going to get back to that place where we are in this position? Let's read it first. I'm, then I'm going to give you a little bit of explanation. All right, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 1. Check this out right here, brother. This is it. Read. And it shall come to pass. So this is a future prophecy. Moses is speaking to the Israelites. Keep reading. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So he said, if you listen to my voice, if you do what I say, read. To observe and to do all his commandments. Some of his commandments. All his commandments. Uh, just the top ten. All his commandments. So we're supposed to do all of God's commandments. Read. Which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Hey, did you hear that? That was sweet. God said if we did what he said, he will put us above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Right? Isn't that a place where we want to be? Who wouldn't want to be in that spot, right? So now, we're going to go and read the flip side of being above. Let's read it. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Uh-huh. But it shall come to pass. So he's telling us again. If it shall come to pass, read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is the flip side. If you don't, if you listen, you'll be above. If you don't, read. If thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. To observe, to do all his commandments. Uh-huh. And his statutes. Uh-huh. Which I command thee this day. Uh-huh. That all these curses that shall all these what? That all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So is a, is a curse a good thing or a bad thing, brother? What you say? Curse. Curse a bad thing. Okay. So now we're gonna read some of these curses so you can identify who this Bible is speaking to. Alright, you get a fly, brother. Make sure you read that flyer. Alright? Read. Give me 16. This is this right here. Uh, verse 16. Uh -huh. Cursed shall thou be in the city. So we would be cursed in the city. Look, do you, if you look around at our condition, brother, would you say we were cursed in the city? We live in the worst communities. Our, our uh, neighborhoods are uh, run, run down. We mistreat each other. We shoot each other. We're cursed in the city. Any city that you go to, you're going to find our people. So God said you'd be cursed in the city. All right, keep reading. Cursed shall thou be in the field. And we'll be cursed in the field. Look right here. See that? Cursed in the field. What kind of field is that? That's a, that's a cotton field, right? We'd be cursed in the field. How you doing, bro? So we'd be cursed in the field. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all got time to listen to the word? So you'll be cursed in the field, right? You hear that, brother? So what the Bible is telling us, if we didn't do, let me get you up to speed with my man here. So if you we didn't do what God said, he was going to curse us. He was going to, all these bad things going to happen to us. The first curse we covered was, we'd be cursed in the city. Think about where we live in the city as black people. Don't we live in like the worst community? We, we, we're in that rundown. We, you know, we, 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 heat, we kill each other, we shoot each other, we mistreat each other. So we're cursed in it. We inherit that generation. Exactly. And you're right. I'm going to show you that in scriptures. And cursed shall we be in the field. Right here. Back then it was a cotton field. Even today it's in the job field. Think about it. Where, where do we work normally? We work somewhere like the job field. We, we're not a CEO of a government. We don't, we don't run anything. We're not uh, in those high positions. 
So God said you'll be cursed in the field. That's even the job field today. So get me 46. But you said a powerful thing. You said that these curses are generational. Hey, brother, do you agree that we're going through generational curses? All right, so we're going to show it to you in the scriptures. Read that. Verse 46. Listen to this right here, brother. And they shall be upon thee. And these curses Ooh. shall be upon thee. That's my bus. I gotta go. Hey, right, brother, you gotta fly. Yeah, I got it. All right, bro. So make sure you read it. We got a website on the back, YouTube channel. We got classes online seven days a week, three times a day for free, brother. Don't don't let this opportunity to learn your nationality slip by. Okay. All right. All right, bro. This is it. What you just mentioned. What you say your name was? Jamal. Jamal. Okay. My name's okay. I read that. And they shall be upon thee. For now these curses are going to be upon thee. For a sign? For a sign. Let's think about that. These curses are going to be upon us for a sign. You turn around, what does that sign say? Why? How do you know that? Because it's a sign. It identifies, right? So these curses are going to be able to identify the children of Israel. He agree. And for a mother. Uh huh. And upon thy seed forever. And upon what? Thy seed forever. Just like you said, these curses are going to be on us generational. Your seed is your children. So our great, 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 great grandfathers, back in slavery were cursed. Guess what? We're still going through the same thing, which proves that we're the children of Israel. Because the white man that's in Israel that says he's the Jew, he doesn't go through this. He, got, he has the diamond district. He has a whole land to himself. He lives luxuriously. He gets money still to this day for four or five years of being uh, what, in the Holocaust. That's it. We've gone through 400 years of slavery. They haven't given us a dime. So who does the curses fit? They fit us. They don't fit them. Read that curse again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. Uh -huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign uh -huh. and for a wonder. Uh -huh. And upon thy seed for So these ever. curses are going to be upon us forever. Keep reading. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, with gladness of heart. So because we would not serve God, these curses are going to be upon us. Read. For the abundance of all things. So God was going to give us everything. He was going to give us the whole planet, brother, if we did what God said. Do you believe that? I feel like the white way, they always feel they was God. Yes. How would they be in power? I feel like they in control of the world due to, like you say, generational wealth. Listen to this church right here. What are you going to do? Control of the Oh, man. Let me give you one of the 28 for the first. Listen to this right here. Because those other nations that's above us, think about it. The white man, Chinese, Arab, all of them above us because we broke God's commandments. That's the only reason. Give me that. Verse 43. Uh -huh. The stranger. The stranger, which is the other nations, the white man, the Arab man. Because when we came out of Egypt, there were other nations in slavery too. They were with us. We weren't the only. Exactly. We weren't the only one to break the, break the, uh, the, the promise or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we were. Sure. You know, we were the the laws were only given to us. That's why we had to follow. The white man, think about all the evil that the white man does. He away with it. He shoot you. You can see him shoot you on camera. Right. And he'll say, I ain't do nothing wrong. Yeah. And he get away with it. Because he was not given the law, so he's not breaking the law. God said, I'm going to curse you because you broke my law. We're going to get that here in one second. Read that 43. And then we're going to go to Amos 3. Right. Well, listen to this right here. The stranger that is within thee shall uh -huh. get, up, get up above thee very high. So the white man, the Arab man, will get up above thee very high. And thou shalt come down very low. And we're going to be in the bottom. So what you're saying is that everything you're saying, we see it with our eyes. We see what's happening around us, but when we go to the scripture and be able to prove it, then that should make our people say, the light bulb should come on. That's what happened with me. Listen to this right here. Amos 3 and 1. Hey, bro, how you doing? Come listen to this. What's your name? All right. Come on over. Hey, we can ready. Listen to this. Listen to this right here, brother. Listen to this right here. Listen to this curse right here. The book is it. Hey, what? we're at the bottom because we continue to break God's law. That's it. That's it. God, we're waiting for the white man to save us or get us out. We think Biden is going to get us out of it. That ain't going to happen. The only way we're going to get out of this condition is by keeping God's law. Because <coughs> the white man, Donald Trump didn't put us in this condition. The Most High God did. Listen to this right here. Amos 3. The book of Amos, chapter 3. Verse 1. Uh, listen. Hear, this, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, 
a church of Israel. So God is speaking. Remember what we talked about? It was only given to children. Right. He said, this word I spoke against you, Jamal. Oh, children. Come on, right? Jamal, Jamal. Jamal. Oh, children of Israel. Read. Against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, uh -huh. say. This is what he's saying. You only. You only. I don't know any other nations. You only. Have I known. Of all the families of the earth. Of all the families of the earth. So the white man, the Arabs, the Chinese, Japanese, whatever you want to call it. You only have I known of all those families of the earth. Free. I will punish you. For, I will, therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. You got children? No. You don't? You got children? Yeah. Okay. So you got a daughter, right? Now, if, if, if uh, your daughter went outside and did something that you told her not to do, you say, hey, don't play near that car or near traffic, and she went out there and she did it, right? She went out there and got near that car, what would you do? You'd punish her, right? Now, if she was out there with another child, would you punish that other child? No, why? Why, why would you do that? It's not. That's what we're saying. That's why God is punishing us, because we're his children. We do what's again. We do what's wrong against God. The other nations, they don't have a God. Their gods are idols. It ain't, it ain't but one God, and He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was our forefather. His name was changed to Israel. You see this right here, brother? Come identify yourself on this sign. Because you see, come look at look, look at the sign. This is what they called us here in the land of our captivity. You got uh, American black. You got West Indian. You got Haitians, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans. The Guatemalans, the uh, American Indians, uh, Seminole Indians, you can go on down. That's what they call us in our land of our captivity. But this is what God calls us on this side. Alright? These names are in the Bible. You see how many names are on that thing? It's 12 names, 12 sons. Jacob had 12 sons. These are the sons. We are the descendants of those sons. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth